Well, everybody, let's learn how to do railroad crossings today. Yeah? All right, get ready. Well, today's finally the day that I'm going to do the railroad crossings. I know I've been talking about it for a while. But what I got is lightweight spackle tank. You can get this for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. All right. I just take it on my finger. Just mash it in between the rails. All right. The entire width of your road. All right. And we're going to get it in there about as best as we can. All right. And you leave a little on each side. It actually does help because it helps the road transition. Any extra you just put back in the container for use later. All right. Just pretty much bring it up as level as you can to the rail heads. All right. I'm going to let this set up for about 10 minutes. And then I'm going to be back to show you how to do the grooves. This stuff takes a while to dry. So you got time. And while it's wet, it likes to uh, do what you don't want it to do. So leave it set for about 10 minutes, and then we'll be back to cutting the groove. All right, now it's been about 10, 15 minutes to dry up a little bit. Now it's starting to smooth out a lot easier instead of clumping up on everything. Um, now, make sure you got an old car or something. I'm trying to get this to focus. Something with the old pizza cutter wheels. wheels. They gotta be the deep pizza cutters. Now I got deep pizza cutters on one end and the newer low flanges on the other. I'm gonna push the car up that way first. And it cuts right next to the rails. Now I'm gonna pull it back to me to cut this side. Just do that a couple of times. You can even wiggle it back and forth as you're going through there. To make sure you're getting the flange ways correct. And we do it down here too. Now the trick is not to worry about any high spots right now. Not even if the couplers are dragging. Alright. Don't worry about any high spots. So. That needs to dry overnight. Alright. So I'm going to turn my attention back to here. Let me grab something. Alright my apple barrel pavement paint and I shake it up the only thing I'm going to use for this is the cap all right so whatever paint is stuck to the cap is all I'm going to wind up using
because this area here is already dry, I can actually do this up here. And we're just going to lay on a nice coat of the pavement black. You can stipple it into the rough areas. It's not really going to hurt that. But you want to be careful to get as little on the rails as possible. That's okay. Because the next part of this trick will show you that that's not really that bad. Paint your approaches. And I guess it's okay if you cover the rail because it's going to come right back off. All right. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just literally slathering it on. I'm not being careful about a mount or anything else. I'm just laying it on there thick. Of course, if you wanted to, you could always come back with a screwdriver, chip some of this back up. It's not the spackling will hold but it's not exactly absolutely permanent all right i could probably chip off this big piece of overflow here but i'm just gonna get what's loose off with the paintbrush stipple it in the potholes Mm, yeah, I leave the potholes because it's just a little bit more realistic. I might actually go back through and just make all my roads with this spackling compound later. Because it does have that nice little detailed effect of there being potholes. I've never seen model roads with too many potholes in them. And if you've ever taken a trip especially in the small backwoods towns and stuff like that. It's almost like you need a four-wheel drive to go down the paved highway. It's especially in industrialized areas where there's railroad tracks, there's a lot of puddles. But you do need to wait for the spackling to completely dry before you go painting it. I'm 
a little bit of overpaint and inch scale never hurt anything for the simple fact of uh, it does give a detail to it because things that are less than an inch around often uh, very hard to or even an inch in width are very hard to model but if you use your paint to model it it shows up better and I've showed you that with flowering bushes and stuff like that instead of trying to model each individual leaf of the flower just make it a blur it works better and saves you a lot of aggravation because if you're going to try to do absolutely every last little thing to scale the little stuff the micro details as I call them will drive you completely bonkers before you ever get them the way that you want them and that's it really for how I do my uh, crossings now I actually got this idea from a few other people including um, Chuck from Chuck's Depot he does all of his roads with the lightweight spackling compound um, literally you can buy a tub like this it's six ounces worth it does quite a lot for a dollar at the Dollar Tree it's well worth it I do a lot of my scenery materials actually come from the Dollar Tree except for my ground foam rubber um, that I do get from Woodland Scenics because it's super fine uh, I will come back in with spackling compound later and patch these cracks and let me spin you around it's also good for patching cracks in your other roads too, such as this one here. I'm going to be packing the spackling compound down in there after I redo this road, because this road's going to wind up two inches wide, just like the main street, which for some reason that didn't glue properly. And I'm replacing the bridge that goes behind the farm. That's the reason why it's all torn out back here. I had to uh, Remeasure for some things, and I'm sorry about spinning the camera so fast. I had to remeasure a few things back there and do something right. Now, I'm going to do this without the paint being dry, so some of the paint might actually come up off the rails. But when the paint is completely dry, you come back through with your bright boy. And take that paint right off the rail top. It's literally as easy as it is. I'm trying to be careful not to get any paint to come up off the spackling. Which didn't work out. <laughs> I messed up on the last one. And that's it. Um, when this is dry before I paint, I'll take the Bright Boy and I'll set it on the tracks nice and level and I'll run it straight across both ways. So that way I can get any high spots knocked off. But I wait for it to dry or else you can wind up re-gumming up your flange ways. Now I'm going to grab a little bit more paint and go in there. And once the paint's dry I'm going to redo that so that way I can knock off all that extra too. The same way with the Bright Boy. Just straight across both rails. Knock off any of the dirt. <coughs> well, that was my plan for video today. I will be back in a minute or two after I paint this again with some final thoughts for you. Well, okay everybody, this is uh, going to be the break for two weeks. Um, this next Sunday is Christmas Eve. I've got stuff to do with my family. I've got stuff to do Saturday, and I've got stuff to do Monday. There's no way I'm going to be able to get back to the train room to do another video through this whole next week. So I won't even have one in the back pocket to throw out Sunday. Um, I want to miss y'all. Yeah, miss y'all. I'm going to miss y'all anyways. But I want to wish y'all a Merry Christmas. Um, Happy New Year if I don't get a video up by I take the first this Sunday 
but I don't get a video up in time. Happy New Year. Um, Merry Christmas. And just enjoy yourselves, guys. It's the holidays. Um, if you don't celebrate Christmas, just replace Christmas with whatever you're celebrating. Happy Hanukkah, whatever. I really, you know, that's the way I see it. Um, we're here in America. It's just a well wish. It doesn't really matter. All right. If it's your holiday is different, replace it with what's yours. All right. Um, like, what was the holiday in Seinfeld? You know, um, I can't remember off the top of my head, but there you go. You know, replace Merry Christmas with Merry the Seinfeld holiday. All right. Till next time, guys, though. Have a good one. If you liked what you saw, hit the like button. If you really liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button. You know, I could always use more subscribers. Uh, the more I get, actually, the better chances of making any money off of YouTube. Um, go ahead and click the little bell icon there next to the subscribe button if you want to make sure that you never miss a video. But sometimes I post late at night on Sunday. Sometimes I post pretty early in the morning. It all depends on what time I'm awake. <laughs> Alright, so you can hit that bell button and make sure you don't miss an episode. You can go back and rewatch what I've already put up. That also helps. Um, I do have a Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com backslash for, in Ford F450 will take you right to my page. You'll see my name on it. You'll see uh, Main Street undetailed. I gotta change that picture. And you'll see a bunch of other things. Um, there's one little extra surprise that I'm going to grab real quick. The Maryland Central paint job. Well, paint sheen. It's finally coming along. It's gotten to the point where I've actually broke out the paints. I went ahead and did a model. So I've not yet done the running boards yet or the yellow on the air tanks like I want but hey it's a first shot and we're gonna see so I've still got to get flex coil trucks um, from my micro trains because I'm gonna be replacing the trucks on here with uh, those uh, uh, any questions comments anything like that that will help me make the next video Go ahead and leave them down there. I will be checking my videos over the holidays to see your guys' comments. You know, ask me to do a special. Um, if you want me to test a piece of your equipment or program a piece of your equipment, I will gladly do that on video and mail it back to you. Uh, I can't afford a new piece of equipment myself, but I will gladly review anybody else's piece of equipment and send it back to them. Um, that's about it. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the video. Have a good one. Merry Christmas.